everyone. Today we're going to make a very simple, uh, I guess you could call it gingerbread molasses cake. It's really, really delicious. You can ask my husband because every time I make this, he eats the whole thing in one day. We will make him a cake today. And it's very simple. What we do is we dump everything together and then we give it a good mix with our mixer and it goes into uh, either um, a non-stick uh, cake dish or I'm going to use my cast iron uh, pan, uh, but very, very simple to make. We're going to start off, since we don't use eggs, I'm going to put one banana in here. And these are very ripe, so it's going to be perfect for baking. One banana. So that's going to be my egg replacer. To this, we're going to put uh, some sugar. So I'm only using half a cup of sugar because I'm going to be adding also molasses. And I'm not worried if I'm not precise because this cake will be a little sweet. So there goes my half a cup of sugar. And to that, we're going to add uh, a half a cup of vegan butter or vegan margarine. And the one I'm using is the basil. It's the vegan one. So we're going to do half a cup of this. There we go. That should be it. If I push this done, it should fill my gap there. There we go. So here's my half a cup. And we're going to add some molasses to this. We're going to put about one cup of molasses. Molas molasses. I can't even pronounce it today. There we go. Now, if you don't want too much molasses, you can actually leave some of this molasses out. You don't have to put that much molasses, but you might have to compensate with either uh, more banana or some milk for sure. Because this is going to add moisture to the cake. I'm using a very dark molasses, and molasses is very healthy for us, right? It has a lot of copper and it has a lot of good minerals our body needs it has lots of iron yes it does so here's half a cup for now I'm gonna play it by ear we'll see there's our molasses you know what I'll do it the way I should let me just do it the way I should so who likes molasses? We love it. Okay, so we've got one cup of dark molasses. Okay, to this we're going to add some flour. We're going to add about two and a half cups of flour. There's one There's two And that should be That should be a half right there There we go, we're going to put some baking soda I should clean my counter And we're going to put one and a half. And we're going to put a half of magic. That's baking powder. We're going to put some salt. I'd say about maybe a teaspoon and a half because there's nothing better than having salty and sweet food okay uh, to this we're gonna put some vanilla I would say about maybe one and a half teaspoons of vanilla and we're gonna put some cloves brown clove and we're gonna put where is my half teaspoon here it is 
Okay, we're going to put a half teaspoon of ground clove. And here's my ginger. Here's my ginger. And we're going to put a whole teaspoon of ginger, if I could just find it. Here, I almost wore the ginger. Okay, here's a whole teaspoon of ginger. We're going to get some cinnamon. Okay, and we're going to put one and a half of cinnamon. Put this away. Okay, and we're going to add some milk. Ready? We're going to add one cup. That's a half. And here's the other half of almond milk. Yeah, when it comes to desserts, my husband is a dessert junkie. So what I am going to do, which I forgot, is add some zest. I normally would add orange zest, but because I don't have any, I am going to use uh, mandarin zest. And I always find that these are flavors that, yeah, you got to go lightly. When you're doing these uh, small mandarins or tangerines, you got to go really lightly, otherwise you're going to go right through it. Orange has a thicker skin, but it still works. There we go. Forgot to put that in. Slipped right out of my hands. Or you could use, uh, like I said, you could use orange. It makes your life a lot easier. And you can use uh, the skin. I'd say about maybe two tablespoons of skin. That should be it. Good. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to mix this up. And I'm using... A stand mixer but you can actually use um, just a hand a hand mixer if you don't have one of these stand mixers so we're gonna mix them up till it's nice and creamy I do have my oven preheated at 350 so that's going to be perfect for this cake and it should go in for at least an hour 60 minutes okay and it goes Lock it up, and we're going to start off slow. I'm just checking the bottom because the molasses sometimes sticks to the bottom so you want to also check it by hand make sure that you've got everything yeah it looks pretty good and if there's some stuck at the bottom it's not the end of the world that molasses is like glue it's so thick Okay, this is good. All right. We might poke some holes and put some alcohol inside the cake. But if you have kids, I would advise not to. It's funny, eh? Today we say don't put any alcohol if you're serving it to the kids. But I remember back in the day when our my mother when she used to make her festive cake over the holidays which i should make one for you guys to show you how she used to make her traditional holiday cake and this was done for many occasions this one cake and uh, they used to put some alcohol in it and guess what we all had some cake we all had some cake nobody died from it Mmm, with that orange, with the uh, tangerine uh, zest, it really makes a nice, nice flavor. Okay. Here we go. We're just going to pull this off. I wish I had a better place to do these videos. 
one day when I can't afford it, I'll find a perfect place to make these videos. And then you get to see my ugly face. I know a lot of people are not saying the nicest things about me that I hide behind a camera. Well, I'm not hiding behind a camera. I really am not hiding. Uh, it's just the easiest place for me to make these videos and to show you my recipes. So whoever thinks I'm hiding, Bulia for you. I really don't care what you think of me. So there you go. Um, I'm going to get a couple of trays to put this cake in. Okay, I'm going to use this cast iron pan tray, bread, bread pan, I guess. I will line it with some parchment. Just going to make it easier for it to come out. going to be easier for me to lift it out and to, there we go, I love using cast iron guys, when you use a cast iron pan, it's like magic, it really is like magic, plus it cooks up even more even, so it really is a good thing to, uh, to have, okay, so we're going to add some to this. Push this over. And that's this round one where I'm gonna put the rest in. Sorry, off camera all the time. This one is gonna be just a small one to put some leftover because I don't want to overfill the other one. And this one's going to cook even faster because it doesn't have as much in it. There we go. Just want to cut that off. There we go. Up to the side it goes. And there we go. So we're going to put this in a 350. It's already preheated. And we're going to cook this for at least 60 minutes. This one might come out a little sooner. But you know how to do the little test. All you have to do is check for uh, to see if it's done by using a toothpick guys there we go and we're gonna make some cake mm. Okay guys, we're going to make a little uh, alcoholic syrup to pour on the cake once it's done. So if you if you took the zest of the orange, use that, but I'm using this for now so I don't waste it. And we're going to use one half and use the other half. There we go. And we're going to use 
some tequila you could use whatever alcohol you like we're going to use one two a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of maple there we go Very good. Here we go. Now this is the first one I took out because this was in a smaller tray. wasn't a lot of it. I uh, took it out way earlier than the other. The other one's going to take at least 60 minutes. This came out at 35 minutes. So we're going to start off with just poking some holes. Now this is not something that you need to do if you want. You don't have to put anything. And we're going to brush it on. There we go. Perfect. And you're just going to let it sit and you're going to let it drink it up. And we're going to do the same thing when the other one comes out. And it's going to drink up all that liquid. And then you can either powder it or um, you can ice the cake if you want it. In our case, we're just going to powder with a little bit of uh, white powdered sugar. So I'll see you in a little bit. And there it is. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to poke some holes. There we go. Now, this one was a little bigger, a little higher. We had more batter inside this one cake. So we did keep it in for one hour at 350. The other one was a lower cake, so we took it out at 35 minutes. And here is our drunken cake. Perfect. You could add a little more to this one. It's just going to keep drinking it. And that just gives it even a nice, a nicer moist cake. We're going to cover it and then we're going to sprinkle that with some powdered sugar. And we'll do the same thing with this one. There we go. Perfect. So I'll see you in a bit when this is nice and cool. Okay, so here's the first one. We just took it out of took it out of the little pan, and all we did was just add some powdered sugar on top. If you want, you could do a little bit of cinnamon on the outside. We're gonna make the other one's getting cooled off, but we're gonna make a small glaze. There we go. Let's 
the leftover of my alcohol and orange. I'm going to put some more orange in here. Not orange, sorry, tangerine. Tangerine, mandarin. There we go. And you're only going to use this when you serve it, of course. And you don't want this thick. I'm going to put a little bit of vanilla. Now, how do you know when you have... Um, how do you know when you have the right... Uh, the right texture is when it's more glazy rather than it's more of a glaze rather than a thick paste then you know it's ready and if you find that it's still too thick all you have to do is simply add some extra water or if you want alcohol it really is up to you i'm going to use just a little bit of salted uh sm smoke salt just a little bit as you know salt and sweet go together okay guys sorry my camera shut off again so what do I have in here I've got some powdered sugar I have a little bit of maple I have leftover liquor and orange juice I did squeeze a little extra um, I did squeeze a little extra uh, tangerine juice I am adding enough sugar that it does not become pasty but it stays almost creamy. If you find it's too pasty, add extra liquid. In this case, we can add, see how it is? You don't want this to be a paste. You want to be able to drizzle this on your plate or uh, you want to drizzle it on the cake. Delicious. We're going to put a little bit more tequila. You can use whatever booze you want. How much of it you want too if you want you can make it just sugar and alcohol guys I'm gonna add a little extra smoked salt and that smoked salt really makes a difference to this cake see you want it to be liquid rather than pasty you don't want something pasty Mm, I want this a little more buttery. There we go. I'd say maybe a teaspoon. Now, if you have a hand blender, that'll be even better. I'm doing this by hand. And get it as creamy as you can. So I have some of that tangerine juice. I have a little extra tequila in here. I've got a sugar. I've got vanilla. A little bit of butter. So good. And there's our beautiful glaze. Now remember, however thick you want it, I am not using this to glaze the top. I'm using this to just drizzle the plate and then we put the cake right on top of it. That's it, a little more and we're done. And I love this salt, by the way, because this is finishing salt. So what happens is it doesn't it stays crunchy, so when you take a bite, you actually get the taste of the salt and the smoke. And this is a perfect holiday cake. Beautiful. And if you want it even a little thicker, you could also add a little extra butter. That really is, or margarine. That really is up to you. And if you want to make it just maple, you could add cinnamon in this. It really is up to you how you want to make it.
So here's the dish for my other cake. Still a little warm. I will tempt it. Here we go. Right on top. And there is our beautiful, beautiful dessert. Very simple. You don't have to go crazy. A little bit of that salt on top. Perfect. And there it is. There's our glaze, our cakes, and it took two minutes to beat it together. And the best part about this, it's super delicious, very easy. You mix everything inside your mixer, blend it up, and then into the oven it goes. Remember, if you're making a bigger cake, 60 minutes in the oven at 350. If you're making uh, flatter cakes, they won't uh, need to be there longer than 35 minutes. What you do to the top is really up to you. If you want your cake drunken, add some alcohol to it. If you don't, leave it be the way it is. It's going to be just as good. Okay, guys. Here we go. Here's our beautiful plate. And there you go guys, a beautiful dessert for the holidays and it really takes no time at all to make this. And the best part is that it is super, super delicious. So I hope you like this recipe and if you do, leave me a comment if you try it, share it with your friends and guess what guys, I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.